Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I have another very inspiring show for you today, and my guests are Connie and Bill DeKramer. They have been helping people for over 30 years create a very healthy relationship with food using whole food plant-based. They're going to talk about that and they're going to actually make some healthy, delicious recipes like a raspberry bar that's perfect for the holidays and they're in their 70s. Please welcome to the show, Connie and Bill. It's very nice to meet you. Well, it's great to be here, Chef AJ. Thanks so much for inviting us. Well, I can't wait to, to learn from you. And I, and I'm, I mean, that is amazing. For 30, I, I never heard of you until I heard of you, but you've been, apparently been doing this work for over 30 years. Yeah. Well, it all started actually uh, back when Connie's first husband had a heart arrhythmia and, you know, was given the typical, take these seven medications. It isn't going to cure it, but, you know, it'll keep you alive longer. And that just didn't cut the mustard, so to speak. So they learned macrobiotics, whole food plant-based uh, you know, philosophy that uh, changed everything. We recovered from that entirely. And that's when what? You saw the power of food. Yeah, that really got my attention. And then some years later, I had a very large fibroid tumor. And I got my master's degree in Carbon Vega. I lived in the New York community. I knew macrobiotics very well, and neither of those touched it. Well, let me just interject. Of course, when that was diagnosed, the solution was surgery. Well, let's just take it all out. But that didn't cuss the mustard either. She had seen the power of food, so it's like, oh, I gotta try more. So I went to Optimum Health and learned about live food, raw food. And in two weeks, the tumor shrunk from the size of six month pregnancy to the size of a large egg. And from that moment on, I knew food was the answer for me. So I kept exploring and then uh, we had a restaurant, a healing foods restaurant. We served macro, Ayurveda, and live foods. And people began to want to know, how do I do this at home? So that's how our career started, AJ. Well, wait a second. We have some parallels because I too was diagnosed. I was diagnosed with precancerous polyps in my sigmoid colon, and I went to heal at the Optimum Health Institute almost twenty years ago. It was July six, two thousand three. How long ago did you go there? And did you go to the Austin campus or the San Diego campus? No, the San Diego Lemon Grove. In ninety five. Ninety five. Wow, that is very. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, that place is really a place of healing and hope. It is. It's a great place. They do a beautiful job. You know, and it's amazing that people even heard of it back then because that was before the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was word of mouth. And yeah. she had tried so many other things. I mean, she tried everything, Chinese herbs, traditional Chinese medicine, holographic repatterning. I mean, she was, she me. jumped in. <laughs> she jumped in with both feet. And then someone just mentioned, uh, what about Oh, the other yeah. So, yeah, we looked into it, and like she said, it was life-changing. That is amazing. What kind of diet were you both raised on, and what did you eat most of your life before coming to this knowledge? It was all standard American yeah. diet. Totally. Yeah. A lot of meat, some vegetable, not predominant for sure, but standard American. Oh. Had, had you heard growing up of a vegan or a vegetarian or a plant-based diet at all? No. Well, oh, yeah, I mean, for her so much, but, you know, I was uh, in college in the San Francisco area in the 60s, so that whole hippie era, you know, many of my friends became vegetarian, so I thought, well, I'll try this, so when I was, let's see, was that 73, so I was, you know, 27, and so I went vegetarian, so I had been vegetarian for over 10 years when I met Connie. And what got me on board was how I was playing volleyball competitively. And after a turn of Chef AJ, I would have to hold both handrails to go down the stairs to the bathroom. I'd have to lift this arm out of bed. It was, I had so much pain, inflammation, arthritic pain. And I wanted to keep playing. So I had a doctor, an Ayurvedic physician, a chiropractor, a physiotherapist, and, and you know, they're all giving me stuff to do. And I asked all of them, 
is there something I should do about what I eat to help this? And every one of them said, this isn't food related. So I meet Connie and she sees the pain I'm in after a, day, after a tournament. And she sees how I'm eating. And she says, have you ever thought about dropping the dairy? Because I was lacto-vegetarian, heavy on the lacto. <laughs> Heavy on the cheese and yogurt and half and half. I love the fat and the dairy. And I never put on weight. So I just thought, well, this isn't unhealthy because I'm not putting on weight. So I said, no, that won't work because I, all the experts know that it doesn't work. She said, well, I'll cook for you for two weeks and we'll give it a try. So I went from my very high diet of uh, dairy and fat to a very clean whole food plant-based diet with kale and um, uh, grains, whole grains instead of my, my uh, porridge and even miso soup for breakfast. It was quite a shift, but really in two weeks, the pain was 50, 60% gone. That got my attention. It was completely gone in six months. It's never come back. So that's what got me on food. Wow. And you, you know, I love the name of your, your website, Amazing Health Effortlessly. Is it really effortless? Well, it is if you eat the way the body thrives. Yeah, it, change happens so fast and it's long-term. That's what's so wonderful. Yeah, what gave us the, the idea for that name, Chef H, is when we realized that when we have a symptom, doesn't matter how hard we work to try and adjust that system, that symptom, it doesn't happen until we give the body what it needs to restore health. We are designed to thrive. And to heal. And to heal. Yeah, the DNA in every cell is a blueprint for thriving. And if we aren't thriving, it's kind of like putting bad fuel in your car, right? It sputters. It doesn't perform well. It's not because the design changed. It doesn't have what it needs. So when we realize all we have to do is feed the body what it needs, and then it does the heavy lifting. It readjusts. It brings us back into balance. So the effortlessness is that we don't have to worry about our health. We give the body what it needs. It does all the work. Yeah, amazing. What what do your friends and family say about you? And are, are they healthy like you? Well, my sister, we helped her overcome rheumatoid arthritis and she lost 40 pounds and kept it off for a number of years. She's the only living close sibling that I have. And on my side, yeah. Your side, no. Um, I have one brother that is moving in that direction. Where pretty much everybody comments and says, boy, you know, if I ain't like you, I'd be in great shape. And they don't do much about it. And we're very available to them. When we go to visit, we do our side dishes that they love, but they don't continue doing. They just enjoy them when we show up. <laughs> and so, yeah, it hasn't been a complete transformation of family, but our family has become our, our whole food plant-based community. And we just have such an amazing family. Where do you live and what is the plant-based community like in your area? Oh, yeah. We live in Kelowna, British Columbia, and it's the center for all the fruit growing and much of the produce that grows in Canada. We love being in the farmland. It's so gorgeous. And the community here, our community actually, AJ, is the Zoom community. Maybe virtual. Yeah. Online, yeah. Uh, different places in the world, more than Kelowna more than where we live. When we were teaching this in Edmonton, this is back in the uh, 90s and early 2000s, um, it was, uh, people would come to the house. You know, we had 15 to 20 people once or twice a week learning about this, sampling the food, we would do food demonstrations. But the transformation to virtual really happened when we moved to Kelowna, 2017, and um, it's like we didn't have that base, that face-to-face that -face, base to draw on. And we got involved in something that well, we had always been looking for in helping people make this transition to whole food, plant-based, sustainable, 
And that was how to deal with the mental, emotional piece. What do we do when the cravings come up? And boy, we, we, we just, we tried everything. And nothing really stuck, but in like around 2018, we came across an understanding that's based on how the mind works, who we really are, that has really helped people shift their relationship with food, having insights about how life works and what's behind these cravings. That introduced us to an international community online. So our community now is, is much more online than it was than it used to be when we used to have people come into the house. Wow, that is something. What you? I know you. You you went to some kind of. It was it a school? You became health coaches, right? Yeah, yeah. So the coaching we do wasn't from a nutritional standpoint. It was all about that mental emotional piece. And some people refer to this type of coaching, life coaching, as insight based, meaning what we uh, work with people on is having new insights around their relationship with food. And maybe an example of that would be how, I remember when, uh, when I was in high school, um, I was kind of in with the in crowd, you know, athlete, scholar, fast car, all this stuff. And uh, a new kid came to school and he was a little nerdy. And so I remember we would kind of make fun of him. And, you know, he, he wasn't in with the in crowd and I had to do a project with him. And I got to know him better. And I had this insight, it's like, it went from the way I looked at him as being nerdy to seeing that this guy really had some depth and some character and intelligence and I really liked him. So that insight changed how I saw him completely. So the coaching that we do is about helping people see how the mind works and how life really works to have a new insight into how they see food. And that allows them to really shift their relationship with food, create a healthy relationship with food instead of one where they know what to eat and they can use willpower and self-discipline to make it happen, but then sometimes they fall off the rail. So it's really shifting the way we see that whole relationship. It's, it's been a lot of fun. So do, do you start you start with the mind and then you introduce them to the food? Well, usually both at the same yeah. time. Yeah. We get them to begin eating whole food plant-based and work with them coaching-wise on the um, urges that come up that make them want to follow old habits. So we do both at the same time. You know, I was interviewed yesterday for a podcast by Dr. Uh, Frank Sabatino, and we talked about this, about, you know, when people have cravings, it, it, I mean, isn't the fact that this food, meaning processed food, whether it's vegan or not, was designed to be addictive that, that is, is so problematic? Yeah. yeah, that's a big part of it. But yeah. often those cravings, Chef AJ, I've noticed this even in myself, can come from early experiences that are totally unconscious. And those sometimes show up just in the easy work that we do with people. And when they do, like I had one with potato chips, that was the end of my ever wanting a potato chip again. And it was just something from my childhood where I felt safe when potato chips were around and not so safe when they weren't because of my father and his volatility. So the, um, the thing about this insight-based coaching is that the whole pleasure trap, you know, the whole dopamine-fed feedback loop that gets us so addicted to processed foods and, and refined sugars and high fat, that's happening physically and, and we can never change that. But when we begin to understand that what often has us reaching for those comfort foods is when we're feeling some pressure or stress in our life. Right? When I feel great, I eat good food. There's no pressure. I'm not having any cravings. But when 
I lose my job because of COVID or something, I'm all of a sudden feeling really a lot of pressure and I'm looking for brownies. This isn't true about me, but we have clients who are looking for brownies or chocolate chip cookies or whatever to relieve the pressure of a circumstance. So the coaching kind of goes upstream from the whole pleasure trap thing to help people to relate to life, have a relationship with life in a way that they aren't triggered. They don't feel the same level of pressure from circumstances that they used to. So it short circuits the mind wanting to encourage us to eat food for relief instead of nourishment. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. What what part do you think is the hardest for people? The giving up of like the dairy products, the processed food? Well, you know, it's interesting. You ask a really good question because I think it's different for every person. And generally it's based on when they get uncomfortable, they'll go to what's familiar from the past. So for some people it's sweets, for some people it's savory, they're all different. Do you find that also in the work that you do? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's well, it's usually a combination. So it's either sugar and fat or fat and salt. It's it's one of the others, like you say. It's either the it's either the pastries or the chips. It's yeah, exactly. Or sometimes it's all three. Do most people that seek your counsel need to lose weight? Yes. Want to lose weight? Yes. Yes. And that's what's severe, though, is that, again, it's effortless. All the diets and the hard work they put into losing weight, and the successful losing weight, but always gaining it back and sloth and then some, when they go on to this whole food plant-based diet, start creating a healthy relationship with food, they don't want the old stuff again because they weren't being restricted. So maybe that's another thing to share about the way we approach our relationship with food is that we have very clear guidelines, high nutrient dense, full, organic, the whole thing. And we learned that from Dr. Furman. We studied his work and have really used a lot of what he shows as high nutrient density in our work. Yeah, so back in the 90s, we put together a sheet you know, with nutrient density, dark leafy greens, green vegetables, starchy vegetables, you know, whole nutrient density list. So we give them those guidelines, but we've discovered, because what it used to be, we would just say, just do this and it will work. You know, they would do it, but because they were resisting their desire to have other foods and had no way to deal with that, the dam would break and they would just completely fall off the rails and then we'd be restructuring again. So what we found actually helps them make a more smooth transition is to let them know that there's no restriction. These are guidelines, not rules. So we want you to follow these guidelines. And if you want to go outside the guidelines, we have a little thing that we do. You want to share that? Yeah, we call it eating with presence, AJ. And we show them how to really get present with that food, whatever it is. And in getting really present, people get out of their old habits they find that it just it doesn't draw them in the same way. Well, it's like a little technique. So I, uh, I, I, I'm feeling pressure. I want ice cream. Where's the ice cream? And instead of white knuckling it, we say, you know, just pause for a moment and see if you really, you know, are you going to go there? And if you, you're going to go there, go there and really experience it fully. Don't make, be making yourself wrong. Taste it. Chew it. Just, Smell it. Yeah, feel it. Feel it. Feel love for the experience. Make it a full experience. And then, after it's done, really check in with your body. Because so much of our work, we're encouraging people to begin to be able to hear the intelligence of their bodies. In the same way that we're coded in every cell to thrive, there's intelligence. You know, those little nudges. We know when the food isn't going to nourish us. There's a little nudge there. There's intelligence. So if we go off the rails and we eat with a lot of presence and we're not making ourselves wrong, then our minds are kind of clear. We're not feeling guilt and shame. It's like, what was that really like 
And I can look back to when I used to do my pizza nights and my ice cream and all of that. I can look back and remember how that experience from here up was amazing. But from here down, my body's going again. <laughs> But I'd kind of ignore that because I love this. And like I said, I didn't gain weight and I had energy. So I didn't put, I didn't connect the dots. But this intelligence, this kind of effort my body had to do to deal with that kind of food. I didn't connect the dots that that was my intelligence. So we really work with people to become more attuned to that quiet voice, those little nudges that help us to stay on track. That inner wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, that's there with all of us all the time. So when we go off the rails and we do a presence, eating with presence exercise and really check in how do we feel, then we start creating this relationship with that intelligence. And that's a nice little guide to have to start developing a healthier relationship. Yeah. Here's a question from Susanna, who's watching live. Do you know um, Sheanne and Dan Moskaluk? They've been on the show. They were in the documentary Eating You Alive. No, no, no. no we'd love to meet them. Though. Yeah, she thinks that they might be from the same area. When you work with people, is it like a program? Or is it individually? Is it groups? Yeah. Well, we have a six week program that includes video lessons, a community call once a week one-on-one coaching each week and recipes of course and cooking videos as well saturday call we have our community we have a call every saturday for our graduates of our program who want to continue on so often they have this great experience for six weeks and they go oh i don't want to leave right now i want to stay in, in touch so every Saturday, we have a call with our graduate community with a food demonstration with a little clip from you or one of the doctors. Uh, and then we talk too about the nature of the mind and how it works to help with the whole coaching piece of, of doing it. So we got the six week program. And we also have a program if they really want to get immersed in it. We have a beautiful home with the food garden suite downstairs. We, we do retreats. So people can come and actually live with us for three to five days. So we live together, we cook together, together we eat together, together, we play together. Yeah, it's great. It's just amazing. So there's that whole immersion available for people too. If they want to make that transition, they just keep it in their understanding. That, that sounds wonderful. And speaking of cooking together, you're standing in the kitchen. There's food in front of you. It looks like you guys are going to cook together today. Yeah, let's do it. So we want to do the stuffing for Christmas, but we want to make it with whole grains as much as possible instead of the refined flour products or bread. And so we start with the onion and two garlic cloves and four celery. And now we're going to add mushrooms. We put six to eight cups of mushrooms in it that gives it a lot of flavor and this is the wild rice blend from Lundberg four cups of that and we do use rolled oats two cups to bind it to keep things together and then two apples and pear cut up that adds a lot of beautiful sweet flavor and we're adding the commons a half a cup of those two tablespoons of sage fresh sage from the farm that we'll add and a little bit of well maybe more than a little bit whatever you like of brown black pepper and then we use to hold it all together cashew cream, and this is just cashews in water, blended up very fine. We use a cup and a half of that. Now I'm gonna get Bill to stir it all together to get the ingredients well blended. And then we just bake it for 90 minutes in a 350 oven. And so the cashew cream, we make it home. 
You can use uh, any uh, plant-based milk, uh, but I like to do it here. And I, I can make it a little creamier than what the commercial versions usually are. So this cashew cream that we make, which is on the recipe on our website, is with two cups of water and one cup of uh, cashew. So it's two to one. So that's a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker than usually what a commercial uh, plant-based milk is like. But um, any of the commercial uh, brands will work too for putting this together. You could use oat milk, you could use yeah. almond milk, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, recently, maybe you're aware of this too, Chef AJ, there's been concern about rice and arsenic. And uh, so one of the things that we heard recently from Dr. Bonnard is that they've done research looking back that people that eat a lot of rice and therefore would probably have a higher intake of arsenic. And there's been no signs of any problem from the arsenic. So he said an interesting thing. So he said, well, although these levels of arsenic are higher, it seems to be a theoretical problem. That is, it's not really showing up as a difficulty for people on the street. But he did say that the best rice is the lowest levels of arsenic are from California. So this is the one bird wild rice blend that we're using here. I like that product. Yeah, that's that's what I use. I love Lundberg. It's delicious. That. And that's almost local for you. It's there in Northern California. Okay, so we'll just put this in the eight by twelve, and we'll cover it now. I'll say another thing too. You know, when we used to do the bread-based stuffing that I so loved, um, we would. Cover it for a while and then uncover it to brown the top. But with the wild rice, with the whole grain, we don't uncover it because the grain can get a little hard. So it doesn't seem to need to be uncovered to get toasty crisp like the bread based um, dressings were. And so this, this looks like a lot, which it is, which we like. But it cooks down. So this won't be nearly as high as much when it's all up here. And I have a good version. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Yeah. And it's all done. Okay. Do, do you guys do batch cooking of any kind? Yes. Absolutely. We do. We like batch cooking. We do it especially with whole grains and freeze them. And we get a lot of fruit and produce from the farmers that we work with. So we freeze a lot of that and dehydrate it and use it in other dishes. Well, and in a way, Connie does batch cooking pretty regularly in that our main meal is at lunch. And she really kind of blows my mind in that she never uses a recipe. We had, a, had this restaurant in Santa Fe for five years. We had a special every day, a macrobiotic special, an Ayurvedic special, a living food special. She never used a recipe. And they always, it freaked me out at first. I thought, gosh, what happened if it doesn't work? Five years, it worked every day except once. And that one day, she was able to swing it in about 10 minutes. So before anybody came in, it was all good. <laughs> So what we do is she will make a, a, a lentil stew or a soup or something. She will make enough for like three days. So we do this kind of mini batch cooking or a couple of times a week and we'll have that as a meal for lunch. And then the next day, she'll throw some frozen corn in it or something, right? Yeah, I'll change the way So we'll often use a dish for three days. Yeah, and so, changing each thing. Yeah, it's kind of mini batch cooking so that we don't have to, you know, start from scratch every single day. So I wanted to show you, Chef AJ, with this grain dish, we're going to use a pot of greens. And this is cabbage and kale. And it's lots of we need a lot of dark greens, usually three times a day. Beautiful. That keeps our bodies happy. 
I'm going to swing over. Are there any questions about the dressing or before we go? Uh, I've been so busy watching you. I haven't even been looking at the chat. So let me check. Mm. Let's see. Do you have guys any questions about the recipe or for Connie and Bill? Please put them in the chat. You know, it's funny because they, they I, right before we logged on, I asked you guys if you knew Bob and Fran and they're saying the same thing. We, gotta have, we have to, we have to introduce you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, sure. Love that. for sure. Yeah. Would you, would you mind telling us your age if that's appropriate? Sure, I'll be 80 in a few months. I'm 79. No, I'm 74 going on 75. And I don't know, in a way, I would have to say I've never felt better. You know, I can't get around the pickleball court like I used to. <laughs> True. But, but you do great. <laughs> but in terms of how I experience life, my clarity, my energy, my, just how good I feel. I, I've sure. never felt that. Sure. We both feel it. So yeah. But I want to tell you one thing, AJ. When eating a very high nutrient diet, I began cooking beans and grains with two heaping tablespoons of oil. And then sometimes we'd use oil and umuboshi vinegar for salads. And I had a mini stroke, very minor, uh, a year or so ago, and I went SOS free. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that salt could really affect the ability to be healthy heart-wise. So it's been a transition for us, and I've really followed a lot of what you've suggested in different people in your group. And we've got a choir now. It's so good. And food tastes better than it ever did. I heard Dr. Freeman say that, but I didn't believe him until we tried it ourselves. So now we're SOS free. That's yeah. amazing. It took me a couple of weeks for those taste buds to change. And uh, sure enough, they're telling the truth. It's true. It's really good, yeah. So what do you think? Okay, so this is our raspberry bars. And I'm the one with kind of the sweet tooth. Connie could live her whole life with a single dessert. She'd be happy. But I enjoy the sweeter taste. So I'm always looking for ways to make the dessert type, the sweeter foods, more and more whole food based. So this is something that I, I put together that I really like. And the only thing that has any processing is the oats using rolled oats. I have made desserts with uh, whole grains, but what I find is that with the whole grain, any of that whole grain that's up on top of the baking, it gets so hard, it loses that kind of nice moist um, texture. So this is what we've got. So we start with two bananas, two ripe bananas that are just mashed. So we'll put those in the bottom here. Get everything out. We don't want to make any of that delicious flavor. And then we'll add your favorite little spatula. My favorite spatula, right? I love spatula. Get everything out. And then we'll add dates. And I like this recipe too because there are no machines involved. I don't have to clean a, a, a Vitamix or a food processor, which is usually involved in most of my um, dishes. So this is a fun one for this, just clean a bowl and you're done. What I do, since I'm not using a food processor, which is usually what chops my dates for me, is I use scissors. So if you saw, I just quartered that day, and then I just cut it into the small pieces that the food processor would use. And that means I don't have to clean the food processor. So this is the one thing that's a, a little tacky, ticky. So here's the rest of the dates. I get all those in. This was eight dates, eight of the deglet Muir. So those, the deglet Muir can be a little drier than the material. And these were a little dry. So I soaked these for 30 minutes in hot water beforehand so they'd be a little softer. But look at that. There was a, another day that we didn't see. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to cut that one up too. Yeah. Um, what else do 
else to learn. Oh, okay. Then the, the next thing I'm going to do after these dates is uh, the almonds. So this has uh, a quarter cup of chopped almonds. And again, that's usually something my food processor would do for me. And I find chopping almonds on a cutting board just a little awkward. They're falling, the knife's changing them out. I came across this really cool little gadget. We're not too big on kitchen gadgets because they take up space and everything, but something we'll use a lot, we get gadgets. So this is from a company called Lee Valley. You can probably find it online too. I haven't looked at it on Amazon, but it's a nut chopper. And you just put them in the top here. I chopped some, but I left some in the top. And you just turn it. And so you have chopped nuts, like no time at all. I love it. So that's my uh, chopped nut method. And there's our quarter cup of nuts, and then our rolled oats, which is two cups of rolled oats, two teaspoons of cinnamon. You know, I went on, I Googled cinnamon, the benefits of cinnamon, is, and I was just kind of blown away at what an amazing food cinnamon really is. You know, I began to think about the standard herbs and spices that are so traditional in all the ethnic cooking and that, and almost all of them, if you look them up in terms of their nutrient benefit, almost all of them are so full of antioxidants and polyphenols and, and these things that really nourish us. It makes sense that they would stay in an ethnic culture's diet because it's what makes people healthy, not just the great taste, but really the nutrients that we need. So I uh, I go heavy on the cinnamon sometimes, and I know it's so good. And you know whose cinnamon buns I like the most? Whose? Oh, oh my uh, God, thank you. Thank you. I came across so well. I gotta try those. Those are the best. So I love cinnamon and I love baked goods. So that's what we do. Okay, there's that I'm going to add um, some almond butter. This helps to bind it as well and adds the good fat, a little more protein and flavor. And there's that. I'll get all that mixed in and then just fold in the raspberry and we're ready to go. That's so simple. I love simple. Yeah, yeah. So why don't you bring over the finished product and we can see what okay. that looks like. So we did this, actually, we did a dry one on Saturday with our graduate community. So we, we have some left over so you can see. I don't know if they are really, really good. By the way. Really they good. are so yummy. Yeah, they look like bakery quality. They look amazing. And I love that you're doing the, the, the baking, Bill. Who baker. does that? Yeah, I'm the baker. Johnny does, you know, most all of the uh, uh, savory foods. Uh, the main course, the main course dishes, yeah. And my other specialty is Mexican. Growing up in Southern California, I really got hooked on Mexican. So uh, that's kind of my specialty. Oh, the, oh I didn't fold those in. Hello. Uh -oh. so this, is, this is handy. I've got it on parchment paper so I can drop it back in. There we go. Okay. Do you guys have a do you guys have a cookbook? We do. Yeah, Connie has an online cookbook that's available. It's just an ebook on our website. Okay, that's available. It has not this cookbook, but it has a number of really tasty desserts in it. I think. And our website, Chef AJ, has over a hundred recipes. They're so great. And they're all SOS free. They're really good. So and they're free. Anybody can go on the website and explore those, try them out. Okay, let's do this again. That was fast. That was fast. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what, one thing I like about um, this recipe too, it, it's really quick. So you can be eating pretty quickly. I'm not getting my stretch. Mm -hmm. 
So it should do it. That's my, that's my version of the raspberry voice. Now, the other thing is it doesn't have to be just raspberry. This is a wonderful base for bars, and this can actually be brought into cookies. You can make cookies out of these too. I just find that a little too fussy to make these individual cookies, and I can just drop it in this eight by eight baking dish and, and be done with it. So you can use any food. These are wonderful with blueberries. They'd be good with mango. Mango? We haven't tried it with mango. Yeah, it would be good if you had a little sweet mango. Yeah. And so I use frozen raspberries, but you can use fresh, any fresh fruit. So it's really good with blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, and can you kind of say mango? We'll have to try that. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Mango and strawberry mixed up. Okay, then that is a raspberry box. Now I want to show you the stuffing. We did this. Here's what it looks like when it's baked. And so we make a cranberry, a raw cranberry sauce with apple and orange and date mm. paste. And it is so great with things really yummy. Wow. Who does most of the food prep in your house? Equal? <laughs> she, I do for sure. She is the chef, yeah. But he does all the dessert. Yeah, so I'll, 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 what I will do is, is uh, in the evening, Quite often, I'll just come and putter and put together something new. And it's funny, I, I wanted to ask you this question, Chef AJ. I, uh, I come up with these different you know, recipes and they're really great. We put them on the website, people love them. But I often don't do the same thing again. I'm always, it, food creating food for me is almost more of a creative process than just a feed me process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've made it a few times and it's really good, but then I think, oh, I should bake something tonight. I don't think what would be good. I think, what can I make new? And so, you know, it's just constantly playing with new ideas. But with the number of things that you do, I get the idea that it's kind of a creative process for you too, is it? Yeah, I, I you know, I kind of like think about what I have in the house, what ingredients I have. And, that, and it, yes, it's very fun, I think, to, to think of new recipes, especially the sweet ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Me too, yeah. Yeah. So we want to show you one of the things we do. We eat all organic. So we take all the peelings and make our own stock. Yeah, so can you see that? Nice. And do you do it in the instant pot or on the stove? Yeah, we do it on the stove. And we just had a curry squash as our main course last night. And when you put the seeds and the pulp in, Oh, it makes the broth so sweet. Very I rich. love curry squash. Very rich and sweet. Yeah, so that's something that comes over there. And of course, did at the restaurant as well. And I just love the idea that there are nutrients in seeds, you know, that aren't in the flesh of that curry squash. And that we can make this stock and gain the benefit yeah. of the nutrients that's in the whole food. Yeah. And it's not a lot of extra work because we just, instead of putting it in the trash and putting it in this pot, we turn it on a couple of times uh, through the week. And then she uses that for cooking the beans or the lentils or soups. And boy, what a base. That be. Let me read you a nice comment. Renee says, this couple is amazing. I'm definitely going to try the wild rice stuffing. <gasps> what, what are you guys having for your Christmas dinner if you celebrate? Well, we've, we've really trimmed it down. You're almost seeing it. <laughs> so it's like mashed potatoes. Well, it's kind of everything but the turkey. It's mashed, mashed potatoes. potatoes. We do a mushroom mashed gravy. Potatoes. We do stuffing. Yeah, the, the wild rice stuffing. We do a cranberry sauce. We do greens, greens, greens. Greens, greens, greens. With a vegetable potatoes. like string beans or broccoli or yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. So if, if, if on the menu labels, it would be very traditional. Dressing, mashed potatoes, uh, cranberry sauce, the, the traditional thing, but very plant-based, whole food plant-based. So it's all and so we just we can't get enough of it. So we make enough to last about three days. <laughs> <laughs> 
Here, we got lots of questions in the chat. So um, Mona says, are you on any medication? And if you or, or were you able to get off any medication? I'm on no medication of any no, nor we, is Bill. We've never been on any medication. Food is our medicine. We that is you know how not very many people that are almost 80 in the United States or even in the world can say that. So congratulations. That's incredible. And uh, Renee wants to know what kind of exercise do you guys do in a day? I do two hours of exercise. <laughs> wow. Two hours. That's very dedicated. I love it. I love it so much. I feel so good. And I love walking on the treadmill at a steep incline, not real steep. I do that for 45 minutes. I do floor exercises. How would you describe it? Yeah, well, we've got a, a routine. It's kind of neat. You can find it on the web. It's called Yoga for Westerners with Peter Van Dam. And it's a set of movements and stretching that came from Edgar Casey, actually. And it's really great because it utilizes every major muscle in the body. And, and goes through all the motions, all, I mean, your, your full range of motion for all of your joints in that too. So that only takes around 10 or 12 minutes. So we do the Van Dam exercises more in the evening. And then what I do to add to the exercises is um, some exercises that Dr. Zach Bush has put together, his nitric oxide nitric. exercise, which is just a simple four or five minute exercise that helps generate nitric oxide, which is so good to keep your arteries flexible and working well. I really like that one because I do it with a couple of pound weights in each hand. So I'm getting the motion, I'm building the nitric oxide, and it's almost like a weight training and resistance training as well. Yeah, and I do floor exercises, and then I also do exercises for balance. And whatever my physio shows me, I do. Yeah, yeah. And the one thing that I have that Connie doesn't do as much is uh, resistance training, body weight resistance training. So I do a lot of push ups. I, I'll alternate this, but when I do my push ups, I'll do 120 push ups. Well, did you just say 120 push ups? No, isn't that amazing? I can't even do one. That is amazing. I agree. <laughs> well, that's, that's how it starts, AJ. This is the, the, the amazing capacity our bodies have. When, when we first moved um, here to Kelowna, I thought, let me, oh, what it was, we went for a walk in the park. And you know how some parks, they've got kind of like a little exercise routine, you know, you can do pull-ups and you know, they're just outside and you do your little course, your little circuit. So I thought, boy, I haven't done an exit on a pull-up for years. And I went on and tried to do a pull-up. It was hard to do a pull-up. So I got a pull-up bar, put it in the house, and it started at three. I would do three sets of three, and then it kept going up. I now do eight sets, eight to 10 sets of 10. I do 80 to 100 pull-ups on my pull-up thing. And it's just so wonderful, you know, and it's not that hard now. I mean, when I first started and tried to do 100 pull-ups, it's like, forget that. But our bodies love to be, they to, love movement. yeah, they love movement and they, they like to stretch, they yeah. like to extend, they like to grow. Yeah. And so that's what I've noticed too with exercise. If I do the same routine, my body finds ways to be efficient and not use muscles as much. So we have to shake up the routine so that we're always kind of pressing the envelope a little bit. And that's what keeps the body healthy. I was reading about. Uh, how do you support your mitochondria more, right? That's what makes our energy, mitochondria in the cells. And one of the things is resistance training, pushing the limit. The other thing is like going into really cold situations or hot situations. Or saunas or that crown um, therapy that they do in the ice baths. Make your body adjust and then come back. And the body just strengthens itself up. Wow. Hey, I have a question from Susanna. She says, um, where did it go? Uh, do you have any suggestions for those of us with parents that are around the same age as you guys that are obese and mired in health problems? How do we help them understand that it's the food? Well, you know what I think is great 
is to inspire them and let them be inspired themselves. First, you be the example. That's very inspiring. And secondly, have them watch different uh, videos like the Game Changers is great. Pork Sober Knives is great. What the Health is great. And a lot of times, something like that just touches something in them that they begin to want to seek answers. And the other thing that I would add to it is to the degree that we can, not to judge them. Yeah. The more we can meet them for who they are, the wonderful being that they are, and see through the difficulties that they're having so that I think what we crave most, even more than our health, is connection. And the more that we can show up for them completely non-judgmental, the easier it is for them to change. They're not feeling guilty or embarrassed or, or judged. True. And the, the lower that threshold gets, the less pushback they have and the easier it is for them. Great. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer says, do you guys plan your meals ahead of time or do you just eat what's in the house? I think mostly what's in the house. I I, I love to create. Yeah. I love to take ingredients and put them together and see what comes out. So here's a, here's a fun little thing that Connie's done. When we used to work more one-on-one -on -one with people, she would take clients to the health food store and have them stand in front of the produce section and say, now, see what you're drawn to. Don't think about a recipe you want to make or what you've liked in the, back, in the past. See what draws you. And they would naturally pick out you know, the, the brightest, the healthiest, the best looking produce, which may be foods that they had never even tried before. So that was a way that she used to help them begin to recognize that the body has this intelligence and our body's intelligence will steer us to what will nourish it the most. So it's naturally drawn to the shiny apple instead of the withered one. Yeah. It's naturally drawn to the green broccoli instead of the yellow one. It knows this and we're drawn to it. But here's the really cool thing. She'd bring them back to the house and say, now we're gonna make a meal without a recipe. You just listen to your input. Let, well, she would say, listen to the food because it will talk to you. Yeah. And she would say, and they would look at her like, you're crazy. Food doesn't talk, right? But they would really get into that and, and, and listen for what to do. It never failed. It was one of the most delicious meals they had ever eaten. Yeah, they so could there, make it easily. Yeah, there is this intelligence. And that's, Connie goes to the store and she doesn't, Say, well, I'm going to make these recipes this week, so here's my grocery. She buys what looks good, and then, like you, she says, Jay, you open the fridge and go, What do we do today? Yeah, we have a nice comment from Nikki who's saying you two are an amazing inspiration. And you know, I think Bob and Fran are watching, but I think they, they have a different name for their uh, oh. moniker on YouTube. I think it's Young at Any Age. And I I saw a question. Where did it go, Bob and Fran? If you're there, we miss you. We loved having you on the show. We hope you'll come back as soon as possible. I know they asked you a question. See, my chat, I, I apologize, but my, my chat goes faster than everybody else's because I'm streaming to so many different places. So hopefully I will find that a comment or question from Bob and Fran. But in the meantime, I'm sure you guys know that almost every guest gets this question, which is, what do you both eat in a day? Well, I have a green smoothie and usually half a cup of rolled oats with just hot water for it on it. For breakfast, one walnut. <clears throat> and then for lunch, we always have either uh, starchy veggie as the main course, or beans and lentils as the main course, or a whole grain dish as the main course. And then lots of greens, dark leafy greens with vegetables. And then for dinner, we do a big salad, and then we'll do something mm -hmm. that. Last night was the pre squash. Yeah, we it's did that. Yeah. Just yeah. that simple. It's that simple, simple, but yeah. so good. So yeah. Yeah. My breakfast is a big smoothie like Connie, but rather than the rolled oats, um, 
you saw how big that pot of greens were. Well, we'll eat all of that with lunch, except a small little tub that we put away because I like finishing my breakfast with, with cooked greens, and I don't want to prepare and cook greens in the morning. So I have leftover greens. So mine is a, a, a big green smoothie and uh, the cooked greens and then lunch and dinner. With the yeah. The Nice. Yep, that is Bob and Fran. They're called Young at Any Age. And so I'm so happy to see them there. So one walnut, does that mean like one walnut or one walnut half? Because I couldn't eat one walnut. That's amazing. I crack it, AJ, and yeah. then I eat it. I got walnuts from a farmer and I crack one a day and have that for the brain. That is very, very cool. So I, you guys are great. So you you do like lunch is your biggest meal then. Yeah, that's like like kind of like that idea of breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, dinner like a pauper. Yeah, more along those lines for sure. And yet to look at me, I'm relatively thin. I can't believe how much I eat. I eat a lot. And, I eat that. and, 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 and it seems like that's just what this body needs. And so that's another thing that we share with people instead of counting calories or portion sizes and that. If we listen to our bodies, we will know how much to eat. And so we eat to about 80% full. You know, we, well, sometimes I'll overdo it with a meal like my favorite dressing and cranberry and mashed potato. But usually it's just the 80%. And that works really well. But I eat, I don't know, what would you say, maybe twice as much as that? Yeah, a lot. I, a lot. I love it. Yeah. We both love the food. It's so good and so easy to make and so delicious. I you lose all the desire for anything that isn't this because it's the best. And your body knows it. Yeah. And you know it. Yeah. Deep down. Here's the question from Bob and Fram. Who gets to decide what dishes you'll be serving? I'm guessing maybe at Christmas or other times. Bill or Connie, or is it a joint decision? I think it's both of them. Yeah, it, it really yeah. is joint. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. It's really nice. Uh, how, well, we we both like so much the same thing. So it's a, it's a fun discussion. So instead of it being Connie's creation or Bill's creation, we kind of create it together. Yeah. Yeah. And what's so interesting is how after almost every meal, we say, oh, that's so good. It, it just is that good. Food is so beautiful. Did either of you ever have weight issues? I was a little more on maybe a, a size 10. I got up to a size 10. And I was in the weight loss field for about 10 years. So I tried every diet. And I know why diets don't work. But... It's really eating this weight that I lost in the excess and it stayed off without any attention on it, which I love. What's that good? I'm probably a six to a four. Yeah, it's funny, I kind of had the opposite problem. When I was an athlete and just naturally thin, and so I ate everything I could see trying to put weight on. I had trouble putting weight on. So I'm one of those rare cases that um you know weight that's just never gonna fall. So uh, Bill, what is your favorite thing that Connie makes? And Connie, what's your favorite thing that Bill makes? <laughs> so he makes I'll go first. go first. He makes these chocolate brownies and oh. black beans. I love those. That's uh, a, my favorite thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, Connie is creating a, some, a common palette but a new creation every week. And I would say the things that I really like the most are her lentil dishes. Yeah, she has a knack with lentils that they're always different, but always when I'm finished, it's not only like that experience, like I was saying before, it's not just the experience when you muck up, like, whoa, that was amazing. But my whole body is kind of saying, thank you. Well, you know what I think the secret of Chef AJ is to make your own stock. Mm -hmm. If you have beautiful vegetable stock with your lentils or your beans, it's such a different food, fun taste. 
Uh, Tony wants to know if you guys have any skincare tips or other beauty tips for your healthy glow. That's something that we haven't put much attention on. We just, I don't wear makeup except for lipstick. And I love the way my skin looks. No, it just seems to be uh, this whole food plant based. And, you know, I, I know we get plenty of omega 3, which is the best of the good for the skin um, with the uh, flax. Now, here's something that we discovered too, AJ, that I hadn't heard before. But we use a Vitamix for our smoothies in the morning. And we always used to grind it up, you know, a couple of cups of uh, flax and then go through that because once you grind it up, it's just to lose some of the potency, some of the nutrients get oxidized. We found that we can put whole flax in our, our green smoothie and with the combining of all the other things, it grinds it. So we're able to use whole flax every day instead of using the ground flax that was ground several days before. I don't know if that's a big deal or not, but I like the idea of it's being freshly full ground. Yeah, and we do it with chia too. Yeah. I also make chia and flax. Mm -hmm. Nice. Jesse says, I love your website. The photos of you guys on the homepage makes you feel instantly welcome and at home. And Gisela wants to know, what do you put in your green smoothies? Oh, yeah. Want me to say? Sure. Okay, so I start with kale or super greens or spinach, although I'm careful with spinach because of the oxalate, so we don't use it very often. And then I use one whole tablespoon of flax or chia. I use a piece of ginger, fresh ginger, and then I use frozen fruit, or a, today I used a fresh pear a mixture of fruit and Mango. Yeah, that's what it was. And then I'll put in a handful of seeds or I'll use a whole food, a uh, plant based, what would you call some kind of? Oh, that's like a protein powder. Yeah, a like food. a protein powder. Mm -hmm. And then I use stevia as a sweetener. That's about it. Yeah. And how mine varies, I often have a banana with mine. I think not a big banana bread. Well, often one of my fruits would be a banana. And then we have a lot of pears now because one of our friends that has an organic orchard sometimes pears. Yeah, so it's lucky. wonderful to have these fresh local pears. And if we don't have fresh, then we'll go with the frozen. And uh, same, a uh, lot of dark leafy greens, ginger. I'll do pumpkin seeds quite regularly. I, I like the idea of the zinc. We say zinc, prostate, and that is good. So that's you know, one of the things I do. And then I'll do several tablespoons of the flax that gets ground. Oh, and I use dates. I add three dates to my smoothie. I like my little And sweeter. the most important ingredient I forgot to mention is seaweed. Mm -hmm. So we'll use a very small piece of seaweed. In our smoothie, give us good iodine and a good overall mineral profile. Yeah, that was one thing. You know, we want to make sure we get enough iodine. And so we would have, we, we cook our grains and our beans with kombu. So we get some sea vegetable that way. But I got to thinking, um, well, I actually started. So this is wakame. Yeah, wakame. And usually, if we're going to use it, I'm not going to use it for something to soak it and it's very tender. And I thought, well, I'm just going to start having a little extra sea vegetable. So I started just taking a little piece of the dry, and I would just put that in my mouth, like a sea vegetable snack. Now, it's kind of salty and ocean and fishy tasting. Connie doesn't like it straight. But what we found now is so easy. We'll just drop this amount into our smoothie. Yeah, it's great. So that gives us our sea vegetable, all those minerals, including iodine. It's great for the thyroid. No. Yeah, no. really. That's, that's the other thing. Nice. Well, you guys are really an inspiration. What's the best way for people to connect with you? Do you have a social media presence? Everything you sent me is right below the video in the show notes. Yeah. We haven't done much with social uh, media. Uh, so it's our um, website, amazinghealtheffortlessly.com, or just uh, connect with us with an email. Mm -hmm. Let me direct questions. 
you can see how can you share we love sharing yeah well i wish you every success and the best of health and when when are you going to be 80 connie what day this year our birthdays are only two days apart october 27th so actually next year wow wonderful maybe you should come back for your 80th birthday yeah. that would be great well it was such a pleasure getting to know you and thank you so much for the work you do thank you you well, you do yeah. Oh, my pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. I do hope you'll come back tomorrow a bit earlier because the guest is traveling. It's Dr. Will Tuttle, the author of The World Peace Diet, and we will be going live at 9 a.m. Take care.